So um, just wanted to do a live stream. I haven't shown my face in a while. Not that I try to hide it, you know. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to protect myself from the world. I'm trying to protect the world from me. I think I said that right. Anyways, um, just finished cleaning up the shop. Um, working alone tonight. Don't have the person that usually works with me that I, um, that I do this with. But I've been listening to like a lot of different videos from uh, BGS, uh, Black Outcast Media Broadcasting, um, and they're talking a lot about ADOS. And as a non-ADOS person, uh, Jamaican myself, um, I guess you could say I'm a descendant of slave. Um, actually, descendant of slaves. Uh, one of my ancestors is Paul Bogle. Um, whether you believe or not, the person on the two-dollar bill in Jamaica is the face of Paul Bogle, which. Uh, is Evidence has proven that it's not. Um, but still my ancestor nonetheless. Um, but listening to all this talk about ADOS as a non-ADOS person, I see it and I'm like, this is great. This is what's necessary. Um, I was just listening to the creator of Black Space, B-L-A-Q space.com. And he was talking about, you know, uh, how he created his own media platform, his website. And... Uh, I think it's very important that people like this are, are the ones that are the voice because they're talking about they only want to hear from people that are doing like that are solutions solutions oriented people that are out there making a change and offering solutions for the problems that we have as a people um, and I think that I think that's what ADOS is. It's a solution for a lot of people. I think it's a base um, for culture, um, for uh, not for um, black people, black Americans, um, ADOS. I'll just call it that. I'll just call it that. That's what the movement is. Um, I think it's really a base of a culture or their fight to continue on their culture is probably a better way because there is a culture, of course, in terms of black America. Um, whether you frown upon it or not, there is a culture there. It's there, and this is them fighting out, lashing out in a sense, and saying, hey, listen, we're getting tired of everybody else coming in and taking from us. Um, again, my parents, you know, they're from Jamaica. They came in, I think maybe, the eight, I was born 85. They came a couple years before that. Um, now you see myself where I run a computer consulting business and I own the salon that I'm in right now, uh, one of the partners. And I'm one of the partners in the cons computer consulting business as well, uh, one of the founding members. And I believe in co-ops and working together. So I think ADUS is, again, um, as Mark Black of Black, uh, what's it called? Black Outcast Media Broadcasting says, um, it's, a, it's a war cry. It's a call out for war. It's a call. It's a battle cry for those that are listening and that are saying, hey, listen, we want to do something better. We want to do something for our people. And we're getting tired of everyone else getting put in front of us, which has happened. Didn't know it myself. Didn't really see it. But I always felt, you know, hey, listen, uh, I subscribe to the we're one big nigga in a sense um, mindset or um, uh, path of thought. And I think ADOS is... Um, descendant of slaves just trying to get their little piece what's what's due they've said this already um, my thing is I wish it would have happened earlier I understand why it didn't there's cause and there's effect there's a lot of things in that's been in the way or put down spikes in the road that have taken out their tire and suppose and pretty much as you can see um, these same black people have come these same black Americans have come back and said hey we're still here, we're still driving along this road and we're trying to make things happen. Now, from a non-ADUS standpoint, I think this is very important because it's often, um, even in my own family, where we've talked about black Americans and you know what they want to do and what they, want, like, what they couldn't do or what they didn't do, um, not couldn't, but what they didn't do in a lot of ways, not really understanding the nuances of um, you know, uh, blacks in America. And with my parents coming in, you know, they, the whole pull yourself, pull yourself up by your, uh, by your bootstraps, which I totally believe in and I totally subscribe to. Um, if there's redlining, no problem. If it's redlining in a Spanish-based uh, city like Doral, here in Florida, Hialeah, Miami Garden, oh, not so much Miami Garden, just a little bit. Um, 
It's another spot. Miami. Oh, man. Miami Lakes. Yes. That's the area I'm next to where uh, my shop is located. Um, if it's predominantly Hispanic, send a white permit runner. Deal, uh, send, send a Hispanic or white permit runner. Don't show your face. Work by proxy. If they want to, you know, treat you underhanded, you know, do things behind their back. Um, you know, you always hear the story of uh, Michael Jackson buying out the uh, Beatles uh, catalog from, I think, Paul McCartney. And he asked, you know, how much would you want for this? And he said, I would want this, not thinking that Michael Jackson had it. But what he did is he went around and had somebody else as a proxy buy that for, from him. And then when Paul McCartney found, found out, he felt as if he felt cheated in some way. We just all, all you did is business. All he did was business. And I think ADOS um, should employ that method. And I, I wish some things like that would have happened earlier in mass because I know quite a few people that have done it um, that are, um, what's it called, that are black descendants of slaves, or American descendants of slaves. And I'm looking at this and there's nothing wrong with it for me. I, I see the great, I, I see the great possibilities that this has, what this can actually do, what people can do with this, how they can actually build on top of this and actually really actually have a fucking culture, man. You know, like uh, a culture that, you, you don't see you see more good videos about than bad a culture that's not really steeped in drama where we're going off about that so on and so forth in black america um or in black america media spaces if you will if you want to be more specific and i think um as a non ados person i'm looking at this and uh, if there's violence i'm right here with you i mean if you don't want me to join the battle, no problem. Let me supply the ammo. Let me help in any which way, shape, or form. Um, I've reached out to quite a few, uh, well, not quite a few, but I've reached out to one or two um, black YouTubers and said, hey, listen, if you ever need my networking services, uh, web design services, programming services, or, or coding services, I should say, um, in any way, shape, or form that I can help, uh, let me do so. You know, I know I can get cheap server space at my night job. I can, um, I can, donate networking equipment. I can buy networking equipment. You know, I, even just from my own lab, I've bought quite a bit in terms of networking equipment. And any which way I can actually support this, great. Um, I've been mainly staying quiet um, in some cases. I've uh, been, you know, commenting here or there, but I'm not trying to talk in this space too much. But I think I, I, I really do love it and I think it's great. And as a person that's business minded that, you know, that is actually trying to start a, um, uh, managingbeauty.com, managingbeauty.com. I'm actually trying to start a consulting firm that deals with people trying to be, um, uh, that, that are trying to break into the fashion, fashion industry, or not fashion, but beauty industry. Uh, if they want to start a whole salon, like the salon that I actually own here, you know, everything that's necessary to do that and to make this happen, I have the knowledge of it. Talked to a customer who's a multimillionaire um, from Chicago that lives down here in uh, Florida, um, up in the West Palm Beach area. And if you know anything about West Palm Beach, there's quite a bit of money up there. But in the West Palm Beach area, and you know, I've talked to him, and that day, I didn't charge him for my services because I think I had came late that day, and then he had pushed a couple things off. So I didn't charge him at all for my services. So what I did, but what I did is I actually did strike up a conversation with him, and what he gave me was of a great of great value and what he said is michael when i told him yeah you know i don't really know much i don't know enough he's like michael you do you know a lot and i think other people um what's it called people that are uh, ados they know quite a bit the skills are there um and just ADO, uh, the whole ados movement is something that's going to actually bring them together to allow them to do even more and actually really get the greatness that they they've been wanting and I sent this out to one or two people and it was a bit of a ratchetness, but there's a lot of money in the black community. We all know this, we know the numbers, so on and so forth, the statistics. And I do wanna point this out, Front Street Advertising Project, it is on GitHub, Front Street Advertising Project, FSAP is on GitHub. Um, pretty much it is a advertising project for small to medium sized businesses. 
um, storefront owners, so on and so forth, uses a Raspberry Pi, a Roku TV. You can automate it to where that actual device back there, I'm not sure if I have a good angle, sorry, I can't see it. But um, that device is a Raspberry Pi, hooks up to the TV, and I actually have a different unit here on the network that actually turns on all the TVs at six o'clock in the morning, and then turns them off again at 11 p.m. So you can actually do that, and I even made a small little um, CLI-based Roku remote um, so I can actually run these uh, commands from a cron job so it's just you know you can set it and forget it pretty much so this has been running for a couple months now um, these are some of our barber stylists that we actually have here um, that gentleman is no longer with us but you know uh, we still support him a little bit I'm gonna take that down here in probably like another week or so um, but I think this is very important that everyone uh, should get behind the ADOS movement um, you know what? No, I'm not even going to say that. Because it's not something for everyone. I think the people that are disenfranchised in a sense, the people that are put out there, um, my business partner even, you know, he's from Alabama. And he's been in the, um, he's, he's been in through the court system, uh, the federal prison system, and he served his time and now he's my business partner, and this is his second location, my first location, a joint venture. The first location is a, uh, he's a sole proprietor of. And he had to do a lot. And I work with him as a, as a Jamaican, and he, he respects my hustle, and I respect his hustle, which is why I got with him. I gotta get rid of that darn thing. It's hard to deal with this stuff. But um, we respect both each other, we both respect one another's hustles, and I believe that um, immigrants and descendants of slaves should be respecting one another. I'm sorry, I sound like a kumbaya Negro. It is what it is. But I do believe, you know, even as men, we should be looking at one another and saying, oh, okay, this is what you want? No problem. I either got your back or I'm going to stand aside to allow you to do what's necessary for you to handle your business. And I think a lot of people need to be doing that right now. Um, and as a non-ADOS person, even talking to my family, how we talk about black Americans, um, not always in a good light because we, can't, we came from little and nothing in a lot of cases. You know, if I go back to my actual home, my family's home in Jamaica, in the country, they just got power like a couple years ago within the last decade. They just got actual running light um, or, you know, um, like a, what's it called, facility power, if you will, from a power company. So they just got all that. And when I see that, and I come here, I can understand why um, some immigrants would look down on black Americans, but then when you learn about the struggle that black Americans had to go through, then it's like, you have to actually, you have to backtrack on that. You actually have to say, hey listen, these people have gone through a lot and have been put through a lot because, and that has caused a lot of problems and hindrances in their development. Now, they're really trying to come out here and make these um, strides, now they're calling them bots. Now they're saying um, this is a, a divisive uh, movement and mentality. Now if they were just selling like, you know, shea butter and moisturizer creams and hand soaps and all this other stuff, you would have no problem with that. But now they're, they're saying, hey listen, we want not just reparation, but we want maybe a, a black, uh, a black uh, electoral party of some sort or a black uh, a polit political party of some sort. We want somebody that the black people are putting up for, um, putting up as their, as their candidate. Now there's problems. Now they're bots. Now they're this. Now they're that. You know, you have so many different YouTubers out here pointing out um, the dysfunction in black people, white YouTubers pointing out the dysfunction in black people, but then they don't see the, they don't see how that is divisive and nobody's really pointing that out. And, and that's a problem. You know, you want to point at black Americans, and I will say us, I was born here as a black person, not an American descendant of slave, um, but sorry, I do, I am of the mindset, we are one big nigga, so you, ADOS getting what, they, what they're, they're due, getting their reparations in one way, shape, or form is gonna help everyone, you know? I really do believe that, but they should get theirs by themselves. Um, so seeing that and listening to this back and forth, I, I, I really, I'm just, I, I really have to just look at it and laugh and you start to see that 
it's so ingrained in us as a it's so ingrained in us to actually tear down these movements that the system is working properly it's it's working fine it's it's doing what it's supposed to it's um it's actually quite perfect it's actually something to behold and just be like and be in awe of um and i i really i really think this ADUS movement is just yes a battle cry but people really need to be stepping up in this listening to some people some of these people talk um I've always heard somebody like the Grinch God, and I just always thought he was somewhat of a bit of a troll, and I'll openly say that. But he actually said something that was, he said a very nice excerpt on um, uh, Mark Black's channel, um, Black Media Outcast uh, Broadcasting, and he went on his channel, and he wrote a, he, he's, he said um, an excerpt from his book, and I was just like, I was just, I was wrong. I, I was totally wrong. I was just totally wrong about him, and I never really heard much. I always heard him roast people and stuff like that. Um, so I just always thought he was like a funny man. He was a bit of a troll about that stuff. And, you know, he always talks about scratch drags and stuff like that. But, um, you know, uh, he definitely showed a lot of depth in that. And, um, it was actually really good to hear that. And that's why sometimes that I just sit back and listen. I'm more of a fence sitter in a lot of cases. Um, but pretty much that's my little, my spiel about it. It was kind of a bit of a rant. I just going all over the place. I, I try to keep it on a in a certain lane so excuse me if I did not um I've been fairly busy been trying to build up my lab just got a Nexus uh a Cisco Nexus 3048 switch 10 gigabit four 10 gigabit ethernet ports 48 regular ports um actually bidding on a huge job in Orlando uh hopefully I can get that and then I'll start actually um doing I'm actually do a video on the proposal, so that'll be along the lines of like my business talk. Um, so the proposal that I wrote for that. So anybody that's interested in that, please um, look out for that. I'll be doing that hopefully pretty soon uh, once I have some time to go ahead and do that. Hopefully in the next week or so, maybe even do it at my night job. Maybe not because I need time and I need quietness for that. Because it's about like a, it's about <clears throat> man, it's it's like a nine page nine page proposal. Um, about four pages of that is a, uh, or three or four pages is a uh, sample of the document or the specification that I actually have to write, which is a Division 27 communication specification for a building, for a large building. And um, that's going to be really big for my company, um, really big for me. Um, so that's going to be pretty cool. And I think that's going to help some other guys that are actually looking to, into this work that you can actually get with some automation and um, automation providers, cabling providers, and build or builders really, and general contractors to start writing these specifications and get a decent payday from it. Um, out of that, I would just say I'm bidding probably about 95K for that. Um, it's probably gonna be about three to six months for that project. And um, out of that, I should be getting, my company itself should be getting close to about 60 something thousand dollars from that project itself. Um, and then I'll get a sizable chunk of that and then that'll help me um, go along and do what I need to do in terms of uh, my business promoting it and I'm actually going to start doing more, a little bit more advertising in the black YouTube space so I'll definitely be reaching out to more people once I have some more capital to do that. Um, uh, so the salon itself is going fairly well. Uh, we've you know lost a couple people you know but for the most part it's paying for itself um some bills we are like we have to play catch up on but we get it nonetheless so it's actually i, I honestly with that being said like it's really not that bad we're doing fairly well um but for the most part if there's anything anybody has questions in terms of business uh, i've i posted a video recently where my girlfriend wants to start a uh, t-shirt company and um, I'm going to do an actual update on that to show you where she's at with it. Um, just so you guys can see, hey, um, myself, like, I helped her out with just guiding her, pushing her along, and giving her ideas. She has, like, a, a main idea, but doesn't know how to put it down. And, you know, just helping her as a, a partner. Um, a uh, what's it called? A uh, support, uh, just a, a support, offering her support. And... Um, you know, it's the woman I'm with. So I want to see her be successful. Um, she has the ambition to do so. And all I got to do is just push her along. She's a lot young. She's a lot younger than me. So um, I try my best to actually help her out 
to make sure she's, uh, she gets to where she wants to be. And I think that's very important in any relationship. Um, a lot of times we say that we have these um, financial issues and problems, but a lot of it's caused by the fact that we didn't help out our spouse or our partner in any way, shape, or form to push them along so that they can actually make the um, necessary improvements on themselves uh, financially and uh, uh, psychologically. And I think that's very important um, that's a couple of things that have been happening on my side of things. Um, uh, hopefully I'll have another update with the rack. I put a couple more devices on there. got an ASA 5550 firewall, which hands about like 1.2 gigabit, gigabits per second, which is nice. So I actually want to try that and put it under test. Um, but there's quite a bit going on here on my side. Uh, I've been a, been a bit infrequent on some of my updates. I'm actually going to be, I'm still doing a lot of work in other areas. And um, if I get this job or the, uh, this project and get that don't going, um, it's going to mean a lot for me um, and for uh, my company. And then it's going to allow me to do other projects and like picking back up, uh, picking the grow box project back up and doing more work on that. I always mention it because I, it's really in the back of my head and it's really just gnawing at me and I really want to get back to it. Um, what's it called? Uh, also, this vending machine. I just want to tell you guys about this, this business. Listen, this, this right here, this is some good shit. I'm just letting you know right now. I just took about, oh man, about 80 about $83 out of there tonight, about $83. As you can see, uh, so various chips, honey buns and all that, popcorn, Sour Patch Kids, uh, different drinks, water, of course, uh, granola bars. And um, last week alone, I think I took about 110. Um, the week before that, I've been getting probably like 60, 70 bucks um, a week out of this, which is great. So if it does say like, $100 a week on average. Our light bill here, we are on, uh, we use FPNL, of course, and um, they're the you know, statewide power grid. But um, with FPNL, you can do what they call budget billing. And with budget billing, it averages out your um, actual electrical costs. So our bill is probably close to about $600 or so for what we currently use. And this can take a big chunk out of that. Um, so that's really good, putting that money in. Also, we have cleaning costs. Uh, the person that usually helps me, I pay them a small amount, probably like 60 bucks, yeah, 60 bucks a week uh, to help me out. So on weeks where they don't, it takes me more time, which I can be using that on other things, doing data migrations for customers or you know working on proposals, so I could be making more money there. So um, I don't mind paying that, it's a small fee, but um, last week with it with this vending machine making about hundred and ten dollars for me I was able to pocket another 50 put well not pocket but put that in the in the business account and then pay him and That's great, right? That alone is a big help um, so You know doing little things like that to in um, to increase your uh, to as an other added revenue stream um, trying to get into uh, some hair care products uh, with a couple brothers um, we're talking about that and working with them on their line. Um, Got to follow back up with them. Sorry about that. Um, but running a salon is not easy. Um, you know, doing all the other thing and running even a, another business alongside that. You know, I've learned, I, I've seen that. You know, um, my attention to detail in some other areas has dropped, and that's been a bit of a problem. So we're working on that. Oh, I thought there's something wrong with that thing. Sorry. Um, so I'm working on that and hopefully if I can uh, get to a point where I'm making quite a bit of money or get a large influx of money, then I can say, hey, deuces um, to one of my streams of income and say, um, I want to do this full time and I can actually um, grow these businesses. And sometimes at some point you have to do that, but it has to be a bit of a calculated risk. Until then, you're going to have to work bit of, uh, somewhat like a mule, uh, which is what I've been doing for the past couple of years. And I don't mind it, but I am getting up there in age. I'm 33 now. And I'll be turning 34 in November. Um, got another good maybe about five years that my body can actually take all the stress and all the, the hard, the work that I'm putting on it. Um, so it's definitely something that, um, that weighs heavily on my mind, how I can actually go to the next level and start working on these, um, start working on my, uh, my, 
start working on growing my other businesses because I mean I've done quite a bit um, to actually make the salon happen and it's not easy man it's, uh, it's really it's really hard in some cases it's disheartening um, when you see a lot of the issues that come up that it's just somewhat BS but at the same time like we're doing quite a bit to make this all work and I praise God, praise Allah, uh, whoever you believe in, um, Yah, that I've been able to actually do this. And um, I think it's important that, let's step back on the ADUS portion of it a little bit. I think it's important for those that, um, that are working towards a, uh, a unified American descendant of slave uh, movement, um, lineage, heritage, um, if I would speak into word, the words of uh, Mark Black of Black Outcast Media, um, you're gonna have to work together. There's gonna be a serious grind. You've been grinding for years, um, for, de for centuries, and um, I think it's coming to the, it's really coming to I guess you, to, to its apex, it's 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 coming. You're coming to the mountaintop, and I think that's very important. And even myself, benefiting from the um, work that has been done before me, the giants that I, the giant shoulders that I stand upon, and me myself becoming, or I myself becoming a giant that others stand upon. Um, my student athletes that I coach, you know, we're in track season and uh, had our first meet. My girl already did first place in shot put, so that was crazy. We were already looking at, um, and she was doing with a, a low throw. And, you know, by all of us trying to work towards becoming the giants that the next generation can stand on top of, or um, who showed us they can stand upon, um, it, it's gonna be a grind. It, it, it can't stop, it won't stop. You, you really just can't, sit there and want it to happen like just want it to come to you you just you just fucking can't you just you can't and i see a lot what i'm seeing right now is it's beautiful it's really just beautiful um what i've seen from myself and what i've seen from people that are close to me um it's just amazing and i love it and um what i'm seeing from other people within the uh, black sector of youtube and black sector of money social media and outlet uh, outlets. I really only deal with YouTube, but I'm, you know, I get, you know, uh, people that report from other um, different social media sites. But what I'm seeing is a real big push towards black excellence, and I'm proud to be a part of it in the things that I do as a person with us, as a foot soldier, uh, not a thought leader in any way, shape, or form, um, but as a foot soldier in these, uh, uh, on this battleground, you know, trying to uh, get kids that look like me, that are Haitian, Jamaican, um, American descendants of slaves, you know, like uh, one person is Chinese and Vietnamese, uh, one person is Hispanic and uh, black, you know, uh, these are people that I'm dealing with on a regular basis, on a daily basis. These are kids that I have to deal with and they ask me questions. One, you know, she's having a hard time whether she should play basketball at a JUCO or get a full ride to FIU. And that full ride for FIU is off of the work that I've done with her so that she can actually get to the point where she can place like seventh in state in the state of Florida, which is not easy. Uh, and, and that doesn't even make her the top. And she's getting still offers like that and getting her to the next level and trying to build a lineage, trying to build somewhat of a, a legacy, uh, not a lineage, but a legacy. And I told one of the coaches um, earlier, and I'll wrap this around and I'll wrap this up and I apologize because I am just going on, but y'all yeah, know I like to talk, but um, building a legacy that people could really say, hey, listen, you know, this is where it started for me because it started before her with my coach and my coaches, Coach Mike Maloney, um, Coach Groner, uh, one coach who's my shot put coach, and I, I forgot his, forget his name, I apologize to him, of course, but I see him every so often. 
and now I say, hey, let's, when I saw him last, I was like, yo, listen, I took one of my girls to state off of stuff you taught me. He was like, what? Damn. Like, and you could see it, it hit him, like hit him right in his chest. Boom! Hit him right in his chest, and it was beautiful. And um, I'm not just saying that, but you could really see it on his face. And then if I can get any one of these students to go off to college possibly come back and do the same thing that I'm doing start a business you know or just work hard at a job if they if they wish and then come back and actually help some of these kids get to school uh, get to college for free because that's what we all about we're trying to get these kids to college for free and based off of their talents and get them where they want to be and where they should be in a in a sense then we're really building a legacy and to wrap this back into ADOS that's what we should have, that's what, you know, um, American descendants of slaves um, should have been doing. And they have, I'm sorry, they have been doing. But they've just been, there's been so many obstacles put in their, in their way. And at this point, as an ally to that movement, to that ideology, to that lineage that has helped me so much, that have, I have learned so much about this country and its history from, um... I'll, I'll stay out of its way and I'll support it any which way I can and push it along, push it forward. And I'll push the kids forward in my own way. You know, anybody that comes that needs help, I will push them forward, so on and so forth. So I'll leave it with that. I've been all, I went all over the place, gave a general update. I did ADUS talk as a non-ADUS person. Um, uh, did a little bit of update about myself and what's going on with the channel. And... Um, a little bit of a more, more blabbing at the end but business is going fairly well and i hope life is going well for a lot of you even if it's not no problem just get through it as always thank you very much for listening